Hello, mic test. Oh. <sighs> Thank you guys and uh, good morning everyone. So today my talk is uh, about automating QA through visual regression testing. So um, I, Andrew already introduced me, but I'll do some quick introduction. So I'm a WordPress solutions architect at Pantheon and uh, I'm all yeah, <laughs> community contributor from the Philippines. And fun fact about me, like Andrew said, I proudly named my three daughters from operating system. That's Unix, Rose Linux, and Kali. And uh, ironically, the name of my wife is Mac. So they all um, like jive together. So, um, so discussion points that we'll be doing today is um, automation intro and what is visual regression and uh, backstop JS basics and what it's what are the limitations and WordPress related ver VRT services out there and we'll do a recap and if you have some cute questions you could uh, ask me later on so to start um, I guess we we all in our career became this cowboy coder um, we started um, without version control, I guess you know, we do SFTP and uh, we don't really do Q&A. We are YOLO coders. We do directly um, to the live site. So once in our career, we, we did that, I guess. So, but now we are, is, we are coming into this era, like what we call like web ops or dev ops era where teams evolve into bigger teams and uh, new requirements or processes arises um, during that. And uh, as much as possible, we want to avoid downtime on our live site every time that uh, we do deploy. So, um, as, and we also want to automate those re repetitive tasks and um, yeah, uh, as, as you have not heard yet, what the hell is web ops culture? We already have like dev ops. What's web ops? What we want to um, like share is like web devs. Um, in this culture, we want web devs to focus on their development and not too much on the tooling. Um, content managers can focus on their um, content instead of like the, the whole whole process itself, and stakeholders will not worry about if there's like um, downtime every, every time that there's like code changes in their website. And um, importantly, even though that the traffic has a high spike, um, we want to make sure that the site won't go down. And uh, why? Why do we automate? We want the bots to do the boring, or bots or AI to do the boring repetitive task for us. And uh, what are the things that we could automate? Um, first of all, the, the one, the most favorite that, that I, uh, I like is the automating of PHP coding standards and uh, also compiling of uh, CSS and uh, JavaScript. You can automate the minify and com combine. Um, also, the cross-browser testing, so um, you won't manually do that, as well as uh, PHP unit testing. Um, also, the image optimization, if you're not using CDN or, or, or the Edge to do the optimization, you could also automate it on your build process. Um, also, for the page speed scoring, um, instead of you manually doing the core web vitals, you could automate it there. And uh, as well as the SEO score audits, every time that you do a build, you could also put that in your CI. <clears throat> and uh, one of the most common thing in the WordPress ec ecosystem is um, core plugin team updates, because it's also one of the um, like most common breaking point and in your testing process. So what are the benefits if we do automate automation? Um, yeah, the stakeholders love this. Uh, it saves us money. And for the developers, it frees up a lot of uh, developer time instead of doing um, 
man manual QA checks. So it also helps a big team to do frequent deployments in their live site. And uh, we want to also do early bug detection even um, and avoid to do uh, or see it on the live side. And um, I guess if you, I, I guess you already have encountered this in your in your life that uh, you tried to fix bug one, and then there's a new bug two that will happen. And after you fix bug two, <laughs> the the first bug is reoccurring. So it's one of the annoying part um, when when fixing bugs. So we want to minimize the reoccurrence of those bugs and uh, we could more focus on more features develop instead of like bug bug hunting or bug thing those bugs so CICD how can automation can help um, we could put in continuous integration work out features in parallel if you have like big teams you could this developer one developer two uh, working on feature A, developer T and 4, working on feature B. And uh, they could work in parallel with each other and not worrying about uh, stepping each other toes when doing development. Um, we could also insert automation and test in specific environments. And uh, importantly, we won't impact the live site while doing development. And uh, on the continuous delivery side, um, you could help, this part could help ship the code from your CI pipeline to the live site, and without doubt, downtime, of course. And we could do a lot of features in this way. And importantly, multiple dev developer collaboration. So, Previously, in the early days of CI/CD, um, people do their own DIY QA process uh, or CI/CD processes, and they use Jenkins, um, Cruise Control, Final Builder to do that, and they have to um, like build the server up, do their scripting from there, and it's a painful process previously. Um, but now there are CI/CD SaaS companies that arise from there, like Circle CI and Travis. Um, no server setup needed necessarily. They just put in your scripts in CI, C, Circle CI or Travis, and they could be able to help you out um, from there. Um, but now, um, a lot of version control hosts has integrated their uh, CI CD, like uh, GitLab, Bitbucket, and uh, GitHub um, actions. Um, so you won't need like separate services in doing your automation. You only have like one provider for that one. So for for easier um, scripting. So yeah, let's let's uh, check first. Sometimes uh, if you haven't heard of visual regression uh, yet, so regression as defined by uh, Lexico. It's like a former or return to a former less developed state. So you fix, you fix something, but it went back to the older self that has like issues as defined by Lexico. So mm, internet. <laughs> and um, when does visual regression happen? Um, especially when you do CMS core updates, plugin updates, theme updates, and modification, and adding new functionality. That's the, the usual um, uh, causes of visual regression um, and PHP version updates. Because sometimes they, when you do those changes, you're going to see like errors in your code and atop it and pushes your site or the, the, your site to like shift a couple of pixels down. So that could be considered visual regression because the, the image shifted. So, what are the VRT, VRT tools out there that you can use? So, we have Wraith, um, 
that was developed by BBC News. So that's the link if you're interested to check that out. It has 5,000 stars in GitHub, 400 forks, and it uses um, open source Apache license. And it does like screenshot in comparison, test the, the live site against the staging site. And there's also this Gemini testing. Um, it has 1K stars in GitHub, 150 forks, and MIT license. And it's developed by Yandex. And this one, uh, there's this Backstop JS. Um, they have 6,000 stars in GitHub, 500 forks, and uh, using MIT license. And they have this cool scrubber thingy that I'll show you later on. And you could also, the, the, the feature that I like with Backstop.js is you could be able to test in different viewport or screen sizes, like the, the width and height. And then you could label it as um, mobile, um, tablet, and uh, desktop. And you could put in as many as you want. And for yeah, the visual, they have like a GUI web visual difference inspector. You could be able to see what is the difference of your test and your live site after you push your changes. And if you're gonna be putting it in your CI/CD, there's like CLI reports. If you 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 could automate if it will pass or fail, given on a specific threshold like five percent or zero percent, it depends. You could be able to. Um, put that. And you could also do DOM ex exclusions. Let's say you have a slider uh, and don't, you don't want to test it, you could exclude that so it will not be included in the testing. So let's go to the setup of uh, Backstop.js. Um, it requires Node.js 6 plus and above, like JS 6 above. And uh, installation is e pretty easy. If you have already Node.js, going to just do npm and install. G for global, then backstop JS. And you need to initialize your installation, backstop in it, and go ahead and edit backstop JSON. So backstop JSON is like a basic file where you put in the configuration. and. Uh, Every backstop.js, you could be able to put in the ID of the test. And uh, like what I have said earlier, you could be able to put in um, different viewports on that section where you could label it. Um, like, let's say you're going to use with 320 by 480, and you could label it as a phone, tablet, and so on and so forth. Um, and for scenarios, this is the parameters that uh, you're going to put if you're going to be, like, for example, you're going to do live site, which is your URL, or, or live site is the reference URL, and the staging site is the URL. So you could be able to put in multiple URLs in there. And these are the rest where your, um, the, the path, the path for the, reports that is being generated in this one. So this is the path that you will configure in your CI where to check those uh, results in your test. So basically, um, to summarize, the basic backstop.js or backstop.json file required paths is the ID, viewport, label, width and height, scenarios, and uh, the label for this one, let's say home page, the URL of your home page, and the URL of your staging site. So with this basic configuration, the basic required parameters in your backstop.js, you could be able to do a basic test. So for the view viewports, you could be able to put at least one, as well as in the scenarios, but you could be able to put in like as many as you want, like 100. And uh, yeah. Uh, for a demo, for initializing your live site, because what we want is we want to check first your live site before the changes are made. So 
we're going to do a backstop reference command, and it will take a screenshot of those uh, pages that uh, you have configured in your backstop JSON file. So if there's no error, no red, red flags in, in there, it means that the screenshot process is successful. And then if you're going to be testing the changes that you have in your staging site, you're going to execute the backstop test. So after that one, there will be a pop-up of the U staging URL site that you um, configured in your backstop.js file, like what in this screenshot. And yeah, um, this is the GUI result. So as you can see, the, the report, there's like two parts of the uh, report. So there's a GUI and there's also a JSON file. So in, in the test that I made, you can see that uh, two tests passed in that GUI and you'll be able to see, um, I, I put in my configuration that uh, if it's lower than 20% difference from the live site, it will pass. So from here, you can see also see 15% difference and then the site shifted separate to pix pixels um, on the y-axis. So that's for the phone viewport, and this is for the viewport of the tablet. Um, so in your CI, you could also check um, the reports JSON file, um, the section for your viewport, viewport um, and the phone test, it passed. And uh, in your uh, tablet, it also passed. So via CLI, when you also execute the backstop test uh, command, you could also capture the error response from here. Um, I simulated that a test failed, so you could be able to catch the response code from there. So this second test that I made, I um, change something, and it shifted the the site. You, I'll do a demo later on. But if you see something like pink stuff like that one, it means that that part of the site on your live site got broken. So, yeah, I'll show a demo la later on. Um, so they they have this uh, backstop js have this scrubber thingy that they call so when you try to test your uh live site and your uh staging site you can see that the scrubber tells you this is the original site and after the changes that's the like pink part that change in your site so that's what they call the scrubber thingy <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. Um, what is the limitations on, on this kind um, of testing? So, by default, um, if you have like dynamic contents, since we're doing screenshots and uh, you could only capture one part of it at a time. Um, dynamic contents like social feeds, which is sometimes random, or if it, like somebody tweeted and then it shifted the, the layout, um, it will be like flagged. So it's one of the limitations, as well as like the image sliders. Sometimes when you do a screenshot and then they, the, the screenshot tool took a different timing on there, um, it might be also flagged as a failure. Also, random ad sources, because sometimes ad, we, it's unpredictable, so it changes sometimes. So, as well as like moving items, like uh, you have a lot of like animation happening in your site, it can also be flagged as uh, a failure. And as well as videos, because yeah, same, same as sliders. And reaction after an action, let's say, um, you have some changes in your menu, 
and uh, you, you need to hover for it to see the difference. Um, you need to do some advanced scripting for you to be able to cam capture that one. But by default, um, the like the VRT process, the default VRT process will flag that as default because you need to do some advanced scripting to capture that reaction after an action. So um, in doing this in your automation, be it uh, on GitHub Actions or uh, Bitbucket or Git GitLab, um, this is not that uh, an opinion on how to set it up. You could do it on many ways. There's um, like a lot of ways to do that to solve solve a problem. So um, usually, what I do is live site. I I clone it um, for our team. Let's say you have like multiple development team. You have developer one, development two, and we have like an environment for plugin core update. So um, while developer one is doing some features, developer two is doing their own um, feature, um, we could do a VRT or plugin core update on a separate environment. And then let's say we schedule Mondays or Tuesdays to like merge our codes. And uh, we do the final integration, final testing before um, passing everything to live. So if all tests passes, um, that's the time that we push it to live instead of doing that um, in the live site. So at the, at the moment, um, visual regression, there are, um, if you don't want to do the automation by yourself, you don't want to like code those stuff because there are already software as a service in the market that is uh, using this, that technology. Um, like Percy, Chromatic, Apple Tools, Viswis, Staging Pilot, and many more. Um, yeah, you could do, use their services uh, to do the VRT on, on your end. Um, as uh, a disclaimer, Staging Pilot is acquired by Pantheon uh, May 2019. So. This was their GUI when, um, before they were um, acquired. They have uh, like a site. You could be able to choose which pages of your site you want to update. And then uh, you could automate it, or you could manually check it first before um, merging those changes in your live site. So they're using the backstop JS for that one. Um, what are the common fe features on those? Um, uh, VRT companies that offers that service. So live versus staging difference, uh, like uh, that screenshot, they shows what's the difference of live and staging. They also provide an API for you to be able to programmatically do it on your end. Um, and uh, yeah, multiple screen breakpoints. Break you could set for mobile, 320 by 720, um, tablet, you could define what are the breakpoints that you want to test. And uh, they can also have version control integration. Let's say you push into GitHub, um, it will be sent to your hosting. And error reports, of course. And uh, in the WordPress space, um, there are also, in, in, in the WordPress ecosystem, there are also uh, existing services that uh, specializes in Word, WordPress that u utilizes visual regression testing. So, yeah, um, surprisingly, there's a plugin for that. So, there's uh, this visual regression test plugin by uh, Bleach. So, you can install a plugin and then you set your URLs on your site that you want to test. and. Uh, it will be sent to their server for testing, and you're gonna get. Uh, you can do comparisons if it if it fails, or it, it will show you if it fails. So um, the free version, is, I guess, will let you only test uh, three pages at a time. I'm not sure about the paid pricing. 
for WPN, the, the friends, the, our friends in WP Engine also uses this uh, um, WP Engine smart plugin manager. Um, they do automated backups. You could also set the frequency uh, on when to check the updates, like uh, daily, nightly. And uh, the changes are applied to, you, you could choose not directly on live, you could choose if it's in test or uh, like the environment that you want to do the test. And uh, if, you, if you want to do it on live, they have a feature to automatically roll back the, the changes if it fails. So our friends in Fi will also have that uh, same feature. It's an add-on. You set the frequency, when to check. Um, you, let's say you want to do the updates at night. Uh, you could also do that. Um, they have like random page checks, like uh, I think 20, 20 pages. And uh, they automatically, they have an option to put the site in maintenance mode before um, doing the updates. And yeah, uh, update light, same, same as uh, WP Engine. Um, the updates can be done on live or in, in the staging. And roll back if the VRT checks failed. And WP MU Dev, same, same technology, backup, checks the screenshot of your site before the update. And then before the update begins, um, there's some checks that you, you could do. And uh, if the site became down or there's some error, it will let you know. And it also gets some screenshots up after the update and will also give you a report. And of course, Pantheon also have uh, this kind of uh, service. Uh, you could set the frequency, you could configure specific pages, and uh, what happens is automatically clone live to a new environment first, so you won't uh, mess with the live site. And uh, you could also exclude certain parts of the site for the test, let's say the, the slider or the videos. If you know the DOM, DOM or, or, or the class name, you could exclude them. So they, will, they won't be um, flagged. And uh, there's aut you can automate the push to live if there's uh, issues or manual. Um, you could manually check using the tool, the scrubber thingy tool, before pushing to live. So the disclaimer, I work, I work in Pantheon. So... Yeah, this are my reference for that, that uh, presentation. And just to recap, um, I have an intro with automation, visual regression tools that is out there, um, how to use the basic setup of Backstop.js, and what are the limitations of this kind of tools, and uh, WordPress services that utilizes visual regression testing. And yeah. Um, any questions, or feel free to connect or approach me if you have questions. So you could find me on those social media platforms. Oh, thank you. So hello.